that once AAA is on there, it'll still have that nice contour. All right, characterization. Everybody still good? Okay. Before we start talking about characterization, we're gonna go through some boring science stuff. Um, everybody cool with uh, value, chroma, and hue? Anybody don't know what that is? We're gonna go through it anyway. <laughs> the, the lightness is also called value. The most important thing in terms of shade matching, I see the pens coming out. The most important thing is the value. That is number one. Symmetry and value are the two most important things. You can have the characterization look exactly the same. You can put your hypercalcification, you can put your whatever. If the value is not there, that's the first thing patients are going to look at. So value is just how light or dark something is. Higher value means brighter, lower value means darker. The next thing is chroma, which is intensity. Um, how much color saturation is, is in, in, the, in the restoration. Um, this has more chroma than this one. <coughs> so basically it's like how red is red, basically. Um, lastly is hue, red, yellow, green, blue. So uh, as far as heat go, light, this is value. Chroma, you see that as you go from left to right, you get uh, higher saturation, meaning more chroma, and the change in hue. Um, can't really see because it's part of the last round, but this is like more of a blue to green, we get more of a red over here. Everybody see that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, who brought their uh, standing glaze kits today? One, two, three. Only three you guys? Four? We're gonna have to share that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, there's different systems to use. Um, your offices usually come with the uh, Ivoclar, which is great. There's others out there. I use Neo in my office, I've used uh, the IPS Max CAD Crystal. Um, they both work well. Depends what works better in your hands. This is a water base, this is an oil base. Um, they're also going to be glaze and stains uh, that you're going to use. They should have the consistency of warm honey, meaning that I don't know who warms their honey, I sure don't, but what that means is basically when you have it on your palate, you put your brush in, you lift it up, there's going to be a little trail of that coming up. A lot of times, if you have this, the glaze or the stain too thin uh, or not enough, it leads to like bubble effects. I'll show you what it looks like. It leads to that. So little bubbles on there. Has anyone ever noticed that on their crowns coming out? This problem was the bane of my professional existence for two years. I couldn't figure out why the heck this was happening. Um, and then finally, I found out why, and that's why I wanted to tell you guys that you guys don't have that problem. Um, <laughs> this is Freddy's crown. Um, what we did first was we added glaze over everything, making sure it's thick enough. If you add too little glaze, or if the glaze consistency is too thin, meaning you, you mix your you mix your paste glaze and your glaze liquid. If you put too much glaze liquid, when you're lifting it up, it doesn't have that warm honey effect. Um, you're going to end up with stuff like that. So. The biggest thing you can do to make the crown look more natural is to add some chroma to it. More important than any little characterizations on the incisible edge, high calcifications, if you want to add more chroma to it, it's going to make it look more lifelike. Look at the difference between this and that. So adding some, adding some cervical warmth here, like a warm color, like khaki, sunset, any of those, um, it's going to it's going to mimic more of the underlying density because the enamel is thinner at the cervical margin than as you go incisively, it's thicker and thicker. <clears throat> because the enamel is thinner at the cervical margin, it means you have more depth in the show through. And you're going to give the illusion of that by giving more warm color at the cervical margin. The way you do that, after the glaze is put on first, very, very important, you have to put your glaze on first. If you put staining on first and you add your glaze, all that beautiful stain work you did is now going to get washed away. So put the glaze on first, and then you're going to be adding stain onto the glaze, the glaze layer. Um, as you move incisively, you're going to get um, it's going to get less intense. So after we add some cervical warmth, we're going to start to shape our incisible edge. We're going to put a little bit of a violet, or not violet, yeah, a smoke or a gray here, to start mimicking the incisal translucency. 
And when you're doing that, 